you have a Cray supercomputer now on Microsoft Azure. Um, and the cost is, yeah, you know, it, it's reasonable, right? It's like, it's sort of creepy, but it's like 20 bucks an hour or something. Yeah, it, even if it's institutional, have, having a Cray, um, my current client had looked at the Cray computer at one time, and you know, the depreciation on those Crays, and to be able to spin that stuff up on demand is really good. And yeah, the, the great debts on Azure or is it? Azure, yeah, 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 not on AWS. I haven't seen, I, I just do most of my work on Azure. Oh, okay. um, do you like it? Yeah, I, I like it a lot. Okay. Um, I've had a lot of goodies. Oh, I just know a lot of people in Azure have like, rusted on yeah. to Azure more than AWS. Okay. Um, the good thing with clouds, you don't have to deal with network admins too. <laughs> and when, when you search for this picture, these aren't network admins. But it's like he's wearing a pink shirt and he's got a skinny tie. You ever seen it? Like this is network admin, right? <laughs> and you don't have to deal with this dude. I hate network admin. Yeah, right. So clouds are good for that. The other one is data science. Um, just as, as we talked about in the introduction, to be able to do all these things with the tools, there's incredible demand for that. Um, and it's a great evolving area. Um, and data engineering is a very emergent field. But to be able to do things properly with data now, there's so many great resources online. So I, I think all these things are really um, converging to change trading a lot as we know. Um, obviously there's other stuff, regulatory and, and, and all that stuff. But in, in terms of meaty, interesting stuff, like regulatory, not interesting, right? Um, these are some really good forces that can either put you at a severe market disadvantage or really give you a competitive edge in your, in your trading. Oh, sorry, data. Not kind. So, why alternative data? Um, the, the main reason is alternative, um, the output of traditional data sources is really tucked out. Um, every single market is intensely competitive and trying to generate output out of some strategy that you've read a book or that you can um, formulate by, uh, based on some market beat is intensely hard. I think everyone who, who, um, who, who practices this day in day out professionally will really agree that getting any output is really hard. Is, is anyone think it's easy? They'd be able to beat in the Bahamas if they. I only saw this just as we were um, going into today. Um, the, one of these top stock pickers got punted because he can't deliver alpha. Um, yeah, it's a front page of the news how hard it is to deliver alpha. And, and, and the other prime example of this is right, the Buffett bet. Do anyone know what Warren Buffett's bet with hedge funds was? Does anyone know that? So Warren Buffett, I think it was about 10 years ago, oh, I had a bet, yeah. yeah. So over 10 years, the, any hedge funds that anyone could, it was for a million dollars or something, there was some trivial amount to him, but a sizable amount of money. So the five best hedge funds that anyone could nominate, on average, they wouldn't beat the S&P 500, and, and he won. So the best and brightest minds couldn't be, um, you know, just beat up which is really, really surprising. He, he was right on that. Um, it's really hard. Your competition will probably already be using um, alternative data. I found this, this is two years ago from BlackRock. So 20% of the data used by BlackRock to analyze trading decisions is unstructured. And that was two years ago. Um, you wrote a lot of full articles there. But that's a lot of um, unstructured and alternate data that they are uh, looking at. Actually, BlackRock announced today that they built a, a whole research center for um, uh, for artificial intelligence. Did you see that news? No, nah. like they announced it today. I think. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah so really going for it. Yeah. So this is a, this is going to be a growing area, right? Like this. Not that many areas where trading can, obviously AI and neural networks is, is a huge area of growth. But, but, but to be that, you, you need the data, right? Like uh, Google has given away um, the, the cream of the crop, their um, AI and neural network programs. But 
I hate the data, but the, the data is, is, is the, yeah, the, the most valuable asset. The algos that sit on top of that will disperse out into the community, but the data that those algos and then the features are uh, really critical thing. And obviously the other one is the fear of missing out, right? Everyone else is doing it so you look like your pants are down if you are not doing it. This is some data I found about the planned expenditure on alternate data this year. 74% um, of hedge funds plan to increase their expenditure on and 50% of asset managers. Um, so it's a really growing area. So what I want to do now is get all your people involved. Um, has, has everyone seen all this news about McGrath's stock price that's been in the news? Front page of the Herald? Uh, you have So uh, McGrath, the real estate agents, you all drive it past, uh, past safe. It's loaded um, two years ago, I think, at about $2. And they're trading at about 40 cents now. They're in extreme trouble. And when, um, when, when you read through the articles on all the problems they've had, uh, you know, they've had all these typical bad company smells, right? If, if you look there, go, if, if you look through the individual bonds of this company, the news on this company, and all the staff leaving, you could say, yeah, this company is going to be in serious trouble. And obviously, you want to look at leading indicators, right? Like, the, the stock price is, is a trailing indicator. You want to find these out as um, leading indicators. So, uh, you guys can tell me if you're going to build. So, like looking at McGrath and saying, I can read the articles and filings of this company and see what they say. So, I, I want to create a metric or a set of metrics for ASX listed companies about to give an indication of company health. Does that make sense? So, what, what data sources would you guys think of? to um, build this feature set. Where would you go and get this data? Facebook complaints. Facebook complaints, yeah, that's a awesome one. Okay. Where to So, Glassdoor. Glassdoor, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think the last door would be, especially in McGrath's case, they had a um, massive amount of um, their estate agents leaving their staff sellers. What else? Twitter. Twitter, absolutely. LinkedIn, yeah, absolutely. LinkedIn, I think, for a lot of companies, I think if you could create a metric and normalise the turnover in an industry segment, say banking, and then compare that, 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 that is all there in LinkedIn, right? You could work out, say, how long the average person works at ANZ compared to the other big four banks. And you know, there are data sets there that show that that's got a reasonable correlation. You know, it's not like 0.8, but it's like a 0.5 correlation to stock price. A company with a lot of staff leaving isn't a healthy company. The real estate people don't go on. No, they don't have a profile set. No, I can't, I can't but McGrath is an example. You could definitely do it with professional service firms, um, accounting service firms. Yeah. I would like the number of hours that the CEO takes off. How many of these are going to be in the middle of the company? Well, good company to see how size go for. No, no, no. Like, they the long the model of uh, CEO plays and... The worst. The worst companies. I think that would be a hard metric <laughs> to capture. But I don't actually know if you say, oh, yeah, the end of the store is gone. Oh, oh, wow. wow. Okay. That's awesome. Okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, <laughs> gold handicap, <laughs> wow. It's really interesting, I was reading, like, I couldn't remember the book, maybe it was like Flash Toys or something, and they're talking about how, how they were trying to work out all these people in the industry. It went really quiet and, you know, secretive. And then they go on with it, and everything's there in plain view, right? It, it, it's amazing how secretive some people can be with their data set. And then totally transparent, <laughs> you can find it. Is there one of the chips that have any chips or any unions or anything? Is there any way to Yeah, so, so that would be in the ASX listings. It usually be C, 
there's usually a breakdown in salary. And then that's intensely unstructured data. But yes, so like um, over here. Yeah, Google Trends, yeah, absolutely. What about other indicators like uh, clearance rates and things like that? Yeah, so industry data on each of these industries. And each industry is going to have very um, unique data. But you can absolutely click that, yeah, but that's published every week or something. You pay a lot of money to RP data. Stuff for that, but um, you can absolutely get that. Can't even know Yeah, but, 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 but that's probably it's, it's stored. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'll write down a few, so let me. Uh, oh, board resignations and appointments. That's all reported um, in ASX filings. You can get that. Um, so, board check, I, I would say, would be a huge, especially for like micro and mid caps. Um, if a board, yeah, even just a metric, how many ASX um, announcements they're making. Help, healthy companies don't need to report to the ASX every uh, three weeks. Unhealthy companies will get yeah. that. Okay. Web, 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 uh, web branding. Okay, cool. Oh, oh. jobs they had, you could work out stuff, turnover from that. Um, but you don't normally publish it. Yeah, it's, it'll be hard. You need to infer it. Some companies do, like on um, they have a flight. Oh, I think that would probably be a, a weak metric. Uh, legal procedures. Um, if you've got a, you can get like data trees from um, local web, whatever courts there are. So you can actually work out yeah, then being sued. What about the compared to me? Okay, that's the thing that's to do with that. Yeah, but, but what you need to sort of find some metric to go and grab to compare those. Like recommendations. Yeah, there are some recommendation websites. So all of these things, right, are traditionally what and analysts do. They go through all the massive brains of, of stuff, all this unstructured data, and try and form an opinion. That's all they do. It'd be a crappy, boring job. And being technology people, like we like putting people out of work, right? We like automating everyone's work and eventually making everyone feel in the whole world. Um, and so that's, just, that, that's what we do. Yeah, it sucks, it sucks to them, right? Yeah, that's what we hear, learning stuff at 7.45 at night. So, Companies are going through now and working all this stuff out. Um, a great one I saw um, is the number of uh, uh, the Teslas being shipped was accurately uh, metric based on what like one state like California has an open database of uh, registration. Yeah, yeah, puts their numbers out. And because te uh, Tesla's whole story is based on the number of cars they ship. You could, you know, the correlation between their stock price and the uh, number of cars shipped, which they're very um, uh, opaque on, and they make their estimates all the time. So that, that gave a tremendous insight into um, uh, Tesla's share price performance. So that's like uh, government registration. Oh, I, I can't remember the state. Um, I think it's on hip data. I've, I've got a whole bunch of things. Actually, I might have it here. Oh, that's it. If you can't see stuff, 